couple weeks ago, we made some flower power scrunchies. This one being my favorite, of course. The more I wear it, the more I absolutely love the yarn pattern. So I thought, why not make a matching accessory? I came across this super cute ruffle bag by Baggy London on Instagram. So today we are gonna attempt to recreate this bag, but with this pattern. So let's break this down. Before we do anything, we need to think through exactly how we're gonna do this. I do not have a ton of experience making bags. I've just made like flat tote bags. I know the ruffles are gonna take up a lot of fabric, so I don't wanna have to recut anything. A lot of people do do mock-ups, um, like take a crappy fabric or some muslin and make whatever it is they're trying to make um, with that before they use a the good fabric. But I kind of find that wasteful, especially when we're just making one. Like we're not mass producing here, so it doesn't have to be perfect, right? That is why we need to come up with a very clear and concise plan before we start cutting anything out. All right, so let's start by figuring out how big we want this thing. I went to their website to see if they have any dimensions and turns out they actually have two versions of this bag. A more regular one called the baguette ruffle bag and the one we want which is the de Beauvoir ruffle bag which says it's 10 centimeters by 20 centimeters by 25 centimeters um, and since I work in inches I'm around up and say that's about 4 inches by 8 inches by 10 inches laying out my measuring tape uh, it seems a little odd like the proportions um and i think i prefer a more square shape so i've decided to go with eight inch wide by eight inch tall for our front and back pieces so i'm going to start by drawing out an eight inch by eight inch square onto some wrapping paper to imitate the round corners at the bottom of the bag i took my deodorant bottle to trace to get a more consistent curve I cut that square out, folded it in half, then cut those two round corners out together. This is a quick little trick to ensure the curved edges are even on both sides. Once you've got that, make sure to label your pattern like so. Now for the base. Looking at the reference image, the side of the bag kind of tapers in, so we want to make sure the width in the middle of our pattern is thicker than the width on each side. So first I'm going to start by drawing two parallel lines, two inches apart and 24 inches long. Make a couple markings eight inches apart. This represents three sides from your front and back pattern piece. I want my straps to be one inch wide, so measure in half inch between your parallel lines on both ends of the pattern. Connect that point to your eight inch markings, then there you go, your base pattern. Define your lines, then cut your pattern out. I didn't fold my fabric up last time I used it, so it's littered in wrinkles. Before I take it to the iron, it's best to get rid of any dust, hair, and thread that may have made its way on it by using a lint roller on both sides. The best way to iron large pieces of fabric like this is to be consistent with the direction of your movement. As you can see here, I'm going from right to left, then up and down, right to left, then up and down, while slightly pulling with one hand so the fabric remains nice and taut. It's important that you don't iron in a circular motion or on the bias, in other words, diagonally, as it will cause the fabric to stretch unevenly and cause unwanted wrinkles. I know it seems rather tedious at first, but once you start getting the hang of it, it'll make ironing much faster and you'll get a nice press every single time. Now it's time to transfer our patterns onto the fabric. 
Always make sure you're pressing lightly with your writing utensil so it doesn't show through on the other side. Add half inch seam allowance all the way around and cut your front and back pieces out. Transfer your base pattern and markings onto the fabric, then on one side, continue the one inch wide strap to your desired length. I wanted longer straps than the original, so I extended it by 24 inches. Define the lines, then cut it out. Since the fabric I selected is rather thick, I'm not going to go for the gathering effect that Baggy London originally has. I'm going to pleat my fabric to create the ruffles. It's definitely a different look, so if you're trying to make it more accurate to the original, I definitely urge you uh, to select a more lightweight fabric and gather your ruffles instead. Whether you decide to gather or pleat, the way to determine how long your piece needs to be are the same. The length of our base and strap piece is 48 inches total. We want to double that, so we need to cut out two pieces that are 96 inches in length. Then because I want the ruffles to be about two inches wide on the fold, I need to measure out four inches flat. My fabric is not long enough, so I traced out an extra strip, cut them out, then cut the third strip in half. Then pin and stitched one half piece to one long piece together to create the full 96 inch piece. We're going to press those seams open, then fold each strip in half and press. When you get to the machine, fold in the ends like so. So you get a nice clean finish. To attach the ruffle to the base, pin the ends of one ruffle piece to the ends of your base piece. Find the middle of your ruffle piece and pin that to the middle of your base piece. Take your time and evenly pin down your pleats. You can always measure out the distance between each fold, but I'm lazy, so I'm just gonna eyeball this whole thing. Secure it by straight stitching all that down. Open it up, then do the exact same thing on the other side. On to the yarn. Just like the scrunchie, we're gonna place the yarn down however way we want it to lay. Reposition it as many times as you'd like before you lock in the desired look with pins. I'd say a good rule of thumb for this is to place a pin every time you reach a curve. Then off to the machine you go. Straight stitch in the middle of every strand of yarn. To make sure you don't skip any stitches or lose your place, make sure the needle is down in your fabric before you lift the presser foot to reposition your piece. And there you have it, this gorgeous pink pattern. Finally, it's time to assemble the damn thing. Grab the base piece, find the notches that indicate the bottom of the bag, 
and match it up with one of the body pieces, then pin it in place. When you reach the top of your body piece, double fold the top edge and pin. When you get to the machine, straight stitch that down first before you stitch the base and body piece together. Follow the exact same steps with the other body piece. Attach the opening ends of the base piece together with the machine, then give your bag a nice press. I don't have a tailor's ham to press those tough to reach corners, so I grabbed some old t-shirts, rolled them up, stuffed the bag, then pressed, pressed, pressed. For the lining, all we need to do is cut out the exact same base and strap piece, fold it, and press the half inch seam allowance. Pin it in place, then top stitch all the way around. Finally, finish it off by hand stitching the open part of the ruffles together. I'd give this project a personal rating of seven out of 10. Mainly because the lining was installed weirdly, like I couldn't figure out how to top stitch the bottom of the bag on the machine, so I just whipped the lining down instead. So it just doesn't look great on the inside. Like it definitely looks homemade. For a recreation rating, I'd give it a three out of 10. I know it's such a low rating. It's just, if you look at the original, you can very clearly tell it's not in the same world unless you're like far, far, far away. If I were to try this again, I'd definitely pick a more lightweight fabric so I could gather instead of pleat the ruffles. I'd also want to try a more pillowy effect, so I'd double the front and back piece and stuff it with some fluff. I'd also shorten the straps so the overall look is more squarish. Anyways, Thank you for watching this video to the very end. Thank you to everybody who subscribed. Don't forget to like this video if it was at all helpful. Say hi to me in the comments and I'll see you next week.